Welcome to another edition of Q&A with CNA, Western Stark County. My name is Dan Mucci, and I'm the Mission Advancement Director for Child and Adolescent Behavioral Health, and the host of this segment highlighting our services and programs. We are thrilled to be partnering uh, with WHS-TV and bringing these segments to the residents of Western Stark County. On today's edition, we're going to meet Dr. Colin Christensen, who wears multiple hats here at the agency and learn a little bit about each hat that he wears. But before we dive in, welcome to the program, Colin. Thank you, it's great to be here. And we're glad to have you. So for our viewers, Colin, tell us a little bit about where you grew up, where you went to school, and ultimately how you ended up at CNA. Absolutely, I uh, was born in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, shortly thereafter, moved the family to the suburbs of Detroit. Lived there for about 20 years. My dad worked for Ford, was a dye maker. My mom worked at Greenfield Village. Uh, from there, went south, went to Texas Wesleyan, where I, uh, in Fort Worth, Texas, mm -hmm. uh, majored in psychology. From there, went to the University of Akron for graduate school. Got my master's and PhD in counseling psychology. I did my doctoral internship at Dallas Child Guidance Clinic, and um, I've been with Chad Ellison probably about 15 years or so. So you've kind of moved around the country. Uh, where have you enjoyed living the best? Um, you know what, in college I had it best because I summered in Michigan, I wintered in Texas, and I had white Christmases. So um, I was living the dream then. Can't get any better than that. Um, in your bio, I noticed that you worked or started your career over at uh, Maslin Indi uh, Indian River Juvenile Correctional Center. I did. So tell us a little bit about that experience and what that taught you about working with some troubled youth. Sure. Um, Indian River, I, if I'm perfectly honest, very challenging environment for the, for the youth and the staff. And uh, one of the biggest things I learned is just the importance of having support from your coworkers in order to you know, do one's job well. And um, are kids still just kids, even though they've had some other challenges in their life? Yeah, yeah, um, certainly. I mean, the, the kids, the youth at Indian River, um, they've made some mistakes, but, you know, certainly we've all made mistakes, so. Um. So let's get into your roles a little bit at CNA. We mentioned you wear multiple hats. So one of the hats you wear is the quality, or I'm sorry, continuous quality improvement and the assistant client's right officer. But before we get into that, you also supervise the doctoral interns. So tell us a little bit about that. How many interns come in every year and what your primary responsibilities are with that? Sure, um, the interns, we typically get four interns each year. Uh, they come from across the country. Uh, this year we have interns from California, Virginia, um, Florida, and Kentucky. And um, it's, it's exciting because they, they come in, they're fresh from graduate school, they have all kinds of great ideas, bring a lot of energy, they're eager to learn. Um, it's, uh, and what I, my role is as training director, just try to set up their training program, try to shepherd them through an important time of their life and really try to make it a, a positive experience for them and for the agency. Nice. So you seem to relish working with our doctoral interns every year, different personalities every year. Um, each group brings their own, again, personalities a little bit. What do you relish most about that role? Um, I think what I like best is just getting to um, get to know them on an individual basis. Um, and I, re I remember back, um, I'd moved across the country from Ohio to Texas for my internship. And it's just a, a, a vulnerable time of life. Um, you're you know, typically by yourself with people you don't know. and so. Just to be there and try to guide them, help them through, through a vulnerable time of their life, help them to, um, it's seeing the growth that they have as well as exciting. Right, and obviously the culture in Ohio is a little bit different than some of the other areas they've lived in. It is, absolutely. Nice. So as we mentioned earlier, you are the agency's C CQI coordinator. Explain to our viewers a little bit about what that is and what that role does. Sure. Um, here at Chen Adolescent, we're fortunate to have a number of, of really good leaders. Joe French, uh, Jody Santillo, um, Georgian Veros. Um, with that said, it's, it's not just a matter of us listening to our bosses, telling us a bunch of cool things to do. <laughs> we really try to um, have feedback from everyone. And so as continuous quality improvement coordinator, um, part of what I do is try to create avenues for people to 
share their voice in terms of how the agency is run. For example, I mentioned we have interns coming from across the country. Mm -hmm. um, we try to have them, give them a, a venue where they can have a voice. In a similar fashion here at Chad Adolescent, one of our um, main points of emphasis is doing well, but not also continuing to do well. And so we'll try to gather data, analyze that data, and then use that to try to improve. So I take it you like to be a data analyst a little bit. I do, I do get to uh, get into my inner nerd. Absolutely. And what does some of that data tell us about the agency? Is it really just uh, looking at number of days we're seeing clients or what kind of data are we really looking at? Sure, great question. Um, some of the data we look at is um, priority levels. And so um, how quickly we're getting uh, clients into the agency, um, how much they're improving. Um, we also look at staff satisfaction. Um, there's a shortage mm -hmm. of mental health workers. And so to the degree that we can keep our current uh, employees happy, it can really help us to better serve our clients as well. Yeah. And so also then you are the assistant client right officer. Tell us a little bit about that role and what you do there. Sure. Um, as the assistant client rights officer, um, my primary role is to serve our client rights officer, um, Kim Cernansky. Mm -hmm. And really, with client rights, I, I look at it as trying to be the advocate for our clients. Um, a lot of times they're coming into an agency where they're not familiar with how things work. Um, I know, you know, for example, if I have trouble with um, my phone company, I, I would like to have someone on the other line who's trying to help me. I try to be that person for our clients when they have some challenges or difficulties um, at John Adolescent or elsewhere. Nice. Is there anything else you'd like to add that we didn't cover today? Um, no, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to come out and um, get to share what we do here at Chad Adolescent. Thank you. Um, so one other thing real quick. If somebody's interested in the doctoral internship program, what's the best way to uh, get in touch with you? Ah, great question. Um, on our website, um, we have, um, under careers, we have doctoral internship. And so you can just look on that, it'll list, uh, it'll have a vignette of all the things that we do here, and um, just shoot me an email and we'd be happy to talk more. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing with us information on all the roles that you do, many important roles. Um, and if anybody has any questions, please visit our website at childandadolescent.org, or you can call us at 330-433. 6075. So that wraps up another segment of Q&A with CNA in Western Stark County. We appreciate Dr. Christensen stopping by today and sharing information about uh, the doctoral program, assistant clinical client rights, and the CQI program. CNA is grateful to our partnership with WHS-TV on the series of programming. And until the next segment, this is Dan Mucci. Thank you for joining us.